This is the second part in our four-part series on how to accurately measure nanosecond scale networks. My name is Dr. Matthew Grosvenor, and I'm speaking on behalf of the team at Exablaze. In this part, what we'll be doing is looking at the Exonic HPT, the High Precision Timing and Capture Device. In the previous part, we looked at quantifying the accuracy of network measurement devices. We settled on using the standard deviation as a way to summarize this accuracy, and uh, we still use the quoted precision from manufacturers for the resolution. What I'd like to do in this part is to introduce the Exonic HPT, the High Precision Timing and Capture Device. The Exonic HPT is very much like other network capture devices that you can get on the market. Uh, it's a dual port 10 gigabits per second Ethernet adapter. It has ultra low latency networking with user space access. It supports PTP and PPS for time synchronization. And it's an out of the box capture and timestamping solution that doesn't require any extra licenses or fees in order to use it. What makes this device particularly special is that it has 250 picosecond timestamping resolution. Putting this on our previous comparison table, you can see that this value is about 16 times better than the best value that we have on there. Now the obvious question to ask is, well, what is its accuracy or repeatability of its measurements? To answer this question, we need to get a little bit creative. On the slide here, we have a representation of our measurement rig that we used in the previous experiments. The problem with this rig is that it assumes that the optical splitter itself is perfectly symmetrical. Now, optical splitters are actually fairly large devices, and there's no real way to verify that assumption that it's perfectly symmetrical. So it's quite possible that there's some sort of path deviation that goes on inside of the optical splitter, which may come back to bite us when we're doing picosecond scale measurements. So if we sort of add that path deviation as a, as a delta optical splitter, there's another potential place of problems in doing this kind of measurement, which is the actual lengths of the fiber, there's no way to verify that they're identical lengths at, at a sort of a pick and second scale level. And so we also sort of need to add this delta cable in there to account for this. And you can see that what we're getting is a fairly complicated looking sort of measurement where we've got to now try and account for or eliminate all of these different deltas. So we thought about this problem a little bit and we came up with a different way of doing it. And that is to use an electrical splitter instead of using an optical splitter. So in this case, we can eliminate all of those bounds by being very careful about the way we arrange our, our circuit board and very carefully matching the track lengths uh, that the signals propagate along. And so we did very much that using uh, a device that looks a bit like one of the crosspoint devices that we run inside of our Exalink Fusion device. But in this case, it's a very small two port version and we have very, very tight control over the track lengths. You can see even the chip is there on its side so that we can make sure the pins are just the right length to match them. So if we run the same experiment that we've been doing, where we send packets and calculate the delta in the timestamps that the packets receive, the XNIC HPT returns the following results. So you can see here a very large bucket is back on zero at 70% uh, of the value. And if we look at the average, we get an average of 0 0.08 nanoseconds, so very close to zero. The spread, again, is looking pretty good at 0.75 nanoseconds. I've run this experiment with many more samples, a, a few billion samples, and when you do that, you do actually get the negative 0.5 sample that you'd sort of expect to see. Now, this result may not look uh, as impressive as it really is because of the scale that we're looking at. So if we put that on the same scale as the Exonic X10, which if you remember from part one was the best performing device that we had, you can see that you can't even actually see the deviation in this device on that same scale. So quantifying this a little bit with some numbers, you can see that the Exonic HPT has a plus or minus standard deviation of 0 0.1, which is 27 times better than the best device on there. So that's some really stellar performance, and it gives us a very high confidence in the measurements that we're going to be taking. So with that, I'm going to end this part in our four-part series. In the next part, I'm going to look at how not to do nanosecond scale network measurements. So we're going to be talking through network measurements as they would usually be done, and some of the traps and gotchas of doing that sort of style of measurement. Join me next time for part three.